Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back. Today we're working on Endeavor, more specifically the Astrometrics deck of Endeavor. In case you don't know, Endeavor is a game I'm working on where you're a little robot having to repair a giant spaceship. The spaceship is divided into separate decks, and each deck has their own team and their own problems to solve. And the Astrometrics deck is the deck where you'll find out where the spaceship is in space. This data will later be used to plot a course back home for the spaceship. I'm gonna try and make this process of locating the spaceship somewhat realistic. You'll analyze certain astronomical bodies and then triangulate your position. That might sound a little complicated, but it's really not. I'll explain further on. And another thing I want to cover in this video is the process of making a game. This is my first big game that I'm working on, and I thought the process would be quite linear. You assign yourself a task, you finish it, and you move on. It's actually a lot of trial and error. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Messing around and trying to find a fun astrometrics deck for Endeavor. Now before we get into today's video, I'd like to introduce you to Brilliant. If you're a game developer or looking to become a game developer, programming and math are going to be part of the job. And Brilliant is the online learning platform to help you acquire these skills. Brilliant takes a new approach to learning. Their interactive lessons let you learn by tackling real-world challenges that keep you engaged. It's like playing a game with your mind. Studies show that this method is six times more effective than passive learning, so you'll see the results faster. Brilliant isn't about memorization. They focus on building critical thinking skills to help you problem solve creatively. And Brilliant makes it easy to learn. With their bite-sized lessons, you can fit them into any schedule. It's the perfect antidote for mindless scrolling, turning your commute or coffee break into a productive learning experience. For game developers, I would highly recommend their programming courses. Learn the essentials of coding, from loops to variables to nesting and conditional logic. And Brilliant will help you create a developer mindset that can be useful in every aspect of game development. And if you would like to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash lucky, or click the link in my description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org slash lucky. The first thing I'm going to do here is create a mock-up of the Astrometrics deck. And while I do that, I would like to explain the challenges of this deck. So, like I said before, the Astrometrics deck, we're going to be locating the spaceship in space by uh, referencing some points in space and then trying to find an intersection and that will be where the spaceship is. And we're going to be doing this by looking through the telescope, finding a couple of bodies, then referencing them in the database that will give our location. Now, one of the most obvious challenges here is that that's kind of boring. If the player just walks in here, walks to the telescope and clicks on three stars and then the computer will say, beep boop, here you are. That's kind of, yeah, that's not real gameplay. So we gotta spice it up a bit. And I got a couple of ideas for this. So we're gonna be trying to break this process down into interesting challenges. I'll keep the telescope as is, so the player can just watch through the telescope and click on something that he will like to investigate. Then we will get a data chip from the telescope and we'll have to analyze the data. For that, we'll move to a different station. And on this station, uh, it's gonna be the data analyzer. And of course, again, it's very boring to just put the chip in and the computer will say, this is what it is. So my first idea to spice this up is to give it a comedic twist. And when you put the chip in, the computer will basically just ask you to analyze it. So you'll put the chip in and it'll show you a picture of what you just uh, watched on the telescope. And it will ask you very basic questions like, is this round? Does this look like it's on fire? Uh, does this look like it's made of ice? Does this look like this or this? And it will just be four or five like basic questions and you will actually analyze the data, making it a little more interesting. That's my first idea. We'll see if it works. So now the player will know what he's looking at, whether it's a planet or a star or a nebula or something else. And now we're going to look it up in a database to find its location. So how are we going to spice up the database? It cannot be just a computer where you put the chip in and it will say, this is the location that will be boring again. So I thought of a couple of different things. And the first thing I want to try out is have the database be more like a library. So we'll have this telescope pad where we're at right now. And then beneath it, I will generate a maze or have a set maze of all these data servers. And you have to actually go into the database and look up your star. Maybe we'll have like a little clipboard that uh, database assistants use where it basically says alphabetical where everything is. And you have to go through this maze and actually find your stellar body in the database manually. I think that could be fun. Uh, we'll do some maze generation, see how that turns out. And then the final part is going back up to the pad where the telescope is, the stage where you're looking at right now. And then we'll plot it on the map. So I have this little 3D map and you'll put in your analyzed and localized data chip, clonk it in and it will say bling. And then you'll see your uh, object. 
You have to do that a couple of times and then you can triangulize the location of the starship. So that's the idea for the deck right now. It might be completely boring, that's what I was talking about earlier, it's a lot of trial and error in early game development, but we're gonna give it a try, so let's get started. Alright, so what you can see me doing now is building out the simplest version of this loop of this stage that I can think of. In this bare bones version I'm really not spending time on logistics or visuals, so in the quiz part you can actually just put in any answer and it will be fine, and in the telescope part you can just select any star, it doesn't really matter if you've done it before or anything. This is just because I'm using my imagination a lot and I'm just trying to imagine if this would be fun in the game. And I'm trying to get these scenes out as fast as possible and then just iterate really quickly, seeing where I can improve, what the fun parts are, what the least fun parts are. So now that I have this bare bones version down, uh, I'll run through it and I'll give you guys my thoughts. So you can see the data plate reader, it's probably the most disgusting model I ever made, but yeah, it's just for testing. I really gotta stop working on visuals so early on because they're probably all gonna change anyway. But yeah, so you start out the stage here, this will be the entry point, this will be the elevator, uh, so where, this is where you will enter. I'm giving myself 40 seconds from narration, so your companion, which is still not in the game, will narrate uh, the scene, what's going on, what you're supposed to do. And then you'll grab an empty, empty plate from the plate storage. So you have an empty data plate, and then you'll move on to the telescope to grab an image. So here we can interact, you can see this super basic telescope UI. Just select this star and then you'll have an image. Perfect. Then you go to the image data processor. Right now it doesn't even show your, your image so you have no idea how to fill out this quiz. But anyway, it will be like comical basic questions. It's supposed to be kind of a joke, this analyzer. So you answer your questions and then it will uh, process the data and now you'll have a star that you can grab in a database. And I think this will be the part that will be the biggest part of the stage because the whole run through right now is like two minutes and every stage needs to be at least 15 minutes. So I'm thinking I'm gonna randomly generate the database. It will be a lot of these closets uh, with maybe some enemies, some maze mechanics. And I think here will be most time spent on this stage. But anyway, right now you can just speed run it by grabbing your data here and acquiring a location from your data. And then moving on to the space map where you'll just plonk it in. So as you can see right now, the plate storage and the space map, they don't have any mini games, like the telescope, the uh, data processor or the database. And I think I'll actually keep it that way. I think it's nice and even. You have like a super basic start and a super basic end. And I'll just have these two be like satisfying machines. So imagine this in the final game being like a vending machine or some fancy mechanical process of handing you a plate and you clicking it in. It's kind of satisfying. And the same for the star map. It will be like an interface where you can plop in the card and it will do a loading animation and then bling up the star with some nice sound effects showing clear progression and a reset of the loop. And then you'll go back to the plate, uh, grab another telescope image, process that data, and then back into the database where the most of the gameplay is gonna be. So as for this stage right now, I'm not gonna scrap it completely. Uh, I've scrapped the intro stage like four times because they're just not fun. But I think this one actually has potential uh, with some nice ASMR sounds and some uh, funner interactions with the telescope and a data processor and of course the database. I think this could work in the game. So I'm really glad about that. Uh, I'm gonna flush out this database a bit more. I'm just gonna create a lot of racks and then make one selectable and then I'll play through it again. And then the next iteration on this deck will be when the enemies come into the game. But yeah, I'm quite happy with it so far. So a lot of you have been asking about an update on Endeavor, so I thought I'd give you one. Uh, I feel very conflicted making these update videos on Endeavor because uh, it's still in this stage. Everything is ugly and things aren't moving very fast yet. I'm trying to figure out what the game is and what could be fun. I really want to do something uh, different with this game. So there's a lot of testing and a lot of just playing around and prototyping, which I really like. But yeah, it's not really very good YouTube video material because uh, yeah, everything looks like a grid and a text label. But I'm having a lot of fun testing it, uh, working on it, and uh, a lot of hours I've been going into it. I think I said in the uh, start of the project video that the project was going to take a thousand hours for a playable demo. It's absolutely not going to be true. I'm almost a almost hundred hours in already and uh, every stage still looks like this. And a lot of stages are going to be scrapped completely and rebuilt. A big part of this stage is also going to be redesigned of course to make it visually interesting. 
But yeah, I, I really envy uh, other game dev YouTubers who have something interesting to share every devlog. Uh, yeah, sadly, my, my game is just a lot of experimenting still because yeah, I really want to try something something different, something new. So yeah, I'm also going to make other videos in between. Uh, I did a viewer suggestion video in between and the one with the Steam Deck development. Those were a lot of fun to do and I want to keep doing those. I really got to keep working on different projects as well, otherwise I go completely crazy. But uh, yeah, this is the state of Endeavor right now. I wanted to give you a quick glimpse into what prototyping the game is like and uh, how the process goes. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you learned something. There will be another episode in Endeavor in a little bit of time. I really want to get into the visual part before I start posting uh, regular updates, just because it's a lot more fun to look at and a lot more fun to view on YouTube. But if you guys like these prototype videos, then of course I'll do more, but I doubt this will get a giant uh, response. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you like game dev. I do a lot of random projects and I do some updates on this bigger project. So if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, see ya.